Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Design to Move. My name is Ryan Maxwell, this is Ryan Brown, and we are two movement specialists here at Fluid Health and Fitness. Each week we bring you another topic on a movement distortion or injury cycle that affects the average population. And today we're going to go over Auschwitz slaughters or patella tendonitis and how it impacts the knee. We condense all of this information to the table of contents over here if you want to skip to a particular section. And at the very end there is going to be a condensed version so you can use it as a tutorial. If you have questions on the topic, reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. Remember, this does not substitute actual medical advice, so if this is a trauma issue, make sure to touch base with a physician. On that note, let's get into our topic. First off, let's talk a little bit about the anatomy and how this issue can surface. Most of the time, what we're going to see with individuals that have Oscar slaughters is it's a youth population issue. It has to do with high impact sports like running or sprinting, anything that's going to put a ton of load on the legs. And this is because the growth plates are still maturing and the bones are getting longer. So this has to do with big growth spurts where the bone will actually get longer but the muscles aren't growing at the same rate. So the tension in the muscles that pull from the patella or the kneecap start to pull that kneecap up and it tugs on this little patella tendon that comes down and attaches to this little bony outcropping on what's called your tibia. It's the lower, uh, one of the lower bones of your leg. And it actually will pull up on that bony marking and it'll start to really irritate it. So people who have issues with this, they're gonna feel pain right on this little bony protuberance. So if you use your fingertips, and Ryan, you can do the same, and run your fingers over it, you'll find a little bony outcropping. And that's where the patella tendon, the tendon that attaches your kneecap to your lower leg, attaches to. If you put a ton of load into the leg, it can actually pull and rupture that bone off of the, or that tuberosity right off the bone and create a little actual shaling of the bone. That's really problematic and can kind of get in the way, obviously, of the, your athletics and sports. We normally see this happen when there's high impact activities, almost like running downhill, when there's gonna be eccentric load into the knee, which means it's gonna bend, right? So that abrupt stopping as we come down, like running down a hill, would put a lot of pressure on your quads as they're trying to decelerate the bending of the knee and pull up on that patella. So that'll pull it away. Now remember, this is not patella tendonitis. Tendonitis is where the tendon that attaches to the bone is tender. So you could use your fingertips, it's just above that little bony protuberance, and rub it in there. And if it's tender in there, that's the tendonitis, okay? That's the tendon being torn, or again, being overstretched. The actual Oshkuds, or Oshkuds slaughters, is where the bone actually hurts. Make sure that, again, if you're self-diagnosing, that that would be the distinction. And if you are feeling that, you may want to go in and see a physician. Okay. For those of you who have the tendonitis or maybe just partial pain there or tenderness, we're going to show you a series of release techniques to help to lengthen the muscles that attach to the patella to become longer so it's not having that upward pull. And then we're going to show you how to strengthen the muscles that help to stabilize the knee and recondition the force coupling relationships around it so that it becomes stable again and it stops creating so much pressure on that attachment point. So the first thing we're going to start with is a release strategy. You are going to need a ball or something that you can use to palpate and do some soft tissue work. We have our fluid ball. You can buy it on our website. Otherwise, grab something like a foam roller. That'll do for today, and let's get into it. For our first segment, we're going to use this ball to do some soft tissue mobilization work on the big muscles of our quadriceps. The quadriceps are the biggest muscle here on the front of her thigh. There's four of them, but there's two of them that really become a culprit in this issue. The first is called the rectus femoris. It goes all the way up from the patella and attaches to your hip bone up here. And then you've got a second muscle called the vastus lateralis, lateral. It attaches to the patella down here, or the kneecap, and then it comes up and attaches to the elbow called the trochanter of your femur. A lot of times we overuse these muscles because they flex the knee, flex the hip, and help with decelerating the internal rotation of the leg when our glutes aren't strong enough, so they become overused, and because of which they pull up on the kneecap and pull it out. That can lead to misalignment of that, more strain on the tendon that attaches to that tuberosity at the tibia, and then again, potentially lead to the slaughters or the tendonitis. 
So because of which we're gonna to wanna to reduce the tension, we're gonna use this ball and use a soft tissue technique called a pin and stretch and then follow it with a stretch to help get that muscle to relax, to help from that pulling up. So Ryan's gonna lay on the table and he's gonna brace his body on this ball just up past the kneecap. Now again, you wanna to go to your own pain tolerance and it shouldn't aggravate the tendon if there is an issue there. You don't wanna put yourself in pain and you don't wanna amplify the issue down at the attachment point. So make sure to do this again pain free. And Ryan, let's get down on the table. You go ahead, follow along. First off, you'll notice that Ryan is laying on the ball. He's placing the weight of his body on top of that ball, which is basically gonna smush or press the, the first muscle, the rectus femoris, between his femur and the pressure of the ball. He's positioned his body so that his opposite leg is away, it's called abducted, and he's supporting his spine through his abdominals so that his back doesn't arch. This muscle also pulls the pelvis down so it can create hyperextension. We don't want to compromise the spine by allowing that to happen. So make sure you keep a nice firm core. He's also bracing his body weight on his elbows and holding his shoulders down so he doesn't impinge or hurt his shoulders. So that's the position that we want to get into. And as you get into this position, you will feel some pressure on that muscle and that's going to be okay. We want to hold it there, but it shouldn't be so painful that it's going to start to guard, which means the muscle will flex and you won't be able to feel it sink into that ball. So again, if that is going on, you can reduce the weight or load on the ball by adjusting your weight, or again, get a broader surface area like a roller or using our ball today. We're gonna stay in this position for about 30 to 60 seconds until the nervous system says, let go. So the muscle should start to soften, the tone of the muscle should reduce, and you should be able to sink into it. Once that occurs, we're gonna go right into that pin and stretch technique where you're gonna to start to breathe out to support the spine and then bend the knee concurrently. So Ryan's gonna breathe out, slowly bend the knee, flossing the weight or the muscle through the pressure of the ball and then come down controlled and then relax and then see if he can sink a little bit deeper into the muscle belly and then shear it by rolling gently down towards his hip. That's going to shear and push. Now again, the goal is not to go back and forth. So he's not rolling back and forth like this. He's holding it under pressure and then articulating the joint by bending the knee without losing the spine. So breathe out, Ryan. He's gonna control his spine and then come back up. So that's a good point here too. Ryan's got some super tight quads. He played so or hockey for a bunch and lacrosse. So these guys, this guy's got some tight quads. You notice when he bends his knee that his back arches. If that goes on, do not move the knee. You're misaligning the pelvis and putting pressure into the spine. You wanna make sure that you support the spine. And again, only bend the knee till you feel that first point of resistance, okay? You would wanna do this for about two minutes or about six to 10 breathing cycles. Breathe out as you bend the knee, breathe in as you let it come back. You should see a noticeable softening of the muscle so that you can get in deeper to the muscle belly each time. And remember, this is the rectus femoris. We're not gonna highlight the lateralis, but it's the same protocol or technique. So if he wanted to attack the lateral portion of that quad complex, he would shift his weight a little bit more, create an out sweep on that opposite hip, that left hip, and then sink into the lateral portion. You might feel it roll over the edge of the, the muscle as it rolls into the lateralis. That's just again where the muscle separates from the rectus femoris. And then again, find the adhesion point or tender spot, isolate it again for another 30 to 60 seconds, and then go through that breathing protocol with the flexion through the knee, and then move on to our next segment. Make sure to get the right and the left side, and then let's get started. Now that we've done our release, what we wanna do is activate muscles that normally are deficient to help stabilize the femur in the hip. Now remember, the issue normally is because there's too much pressure being put into the knee from the upper pool of the quad. If you recall from our other videos, every muscle has a partnership with another muscle that helps to, again, control the movement of a joint. They're called agonist-antagonist relationships or a force couple. The quads are partnered with a muscle on the opposite side of the hip, the gluteals, or your butt. Now normally, if the quads are dominant, the glutes are gonna be impacted and it's going to, again, impact the stabilization of the femur as you walk or perform activities like sporting activities. So that's why today what we wanna do is work on the mechanics of two sets of muscles. The muscles on the medial side are the inside portion of our hamstring, 
along with the glutes so that we can help to stabilize the femur and make sure that the kneecap is tracking in the right angle so there's no distortion of how it's being pulled on. To do that, we're gonna lay down on the ground and Ryan's gonna do just that on our table. We would ask you to do the same and we're gonna target the right side. Now recall, if this is on one side of the body, that's fine, but normally these relationships are bilateral, meaning that there's gonna be excess tension on both sides. So we're gonna approach both sides today for this tutorial. So Ryan's gonna lay down and I'm gonna set him up. And the cueing is important here, so I wanna make sure you understand where we're going with this. He's gonna isolate his right side. So his right arm's gonna come back. His left arm's gonna be adjacent to his torso. And he's gonna try to retract and stabilize his shoulders. His head's gonna be tucked down so he has a nice neutral centered spine. What I'm gonna focus on here is maintaining the level of my pelvis while engaging the hamstring muscles on the inside of the leg. In order to do that, he's going to place his foot down, pull his toes up, and then rotate his toe inside gently. We wanna make sure that the toe doesn't rotate out, or that when he pushes his hip up, which he's gonna be doing in a second, that his leg doesn't dump open, or that his opposite hip doesn't rotate out or flare out as he lifts up. That's gonna be a distortion through the hip, and that means we're not leveraging our medial hamstrings or our glutes efficiently. So we wanna avoid all of those. If you see that in your own form, you're gonna to wanna to reduce how high you bring your butt up, or maybe go to two legs until you can get both of the hips to equally stabilize themselves. Okay, so Ryan's gonna start by lifting his left knee up. He's keeping his knees inside of his hip line so that he's anatomically neutral. He's gonna pull his toe up and keep that knee in. If there is pressure at that point where we talked about it, that tuberosity, again, do not do this movement. It should be pain-free. He's going to push up through his hip, lift his pelvis off the table, and then slowly breathe out as he brings his hips down. Notice that as he comes up, he's not letting his lower back go into hyperextension, so he's not arching excessively through the back. By breathing out to, to decelerate and letting his hips down, he's engaging his deepest core musculature to help maintain the stability of his pelvis so that his glute can fire and anchor off of his pelvis efficiently. So we're gonna wanna breathe in as we lift up and then breathe out as we come down. Remember, keep the knee inside, keep the toe internally rotated, and if you want an additional challenge at the top of the press, come on up, Gently pull your heel back on that braced affected leg so that you start feeling the inside of your hamstring and then slowly come down together breathing out. Good job, Ryan. You would wanna complete two sets of 20 repetitions on both legs. Make sure to give yourself 60 seconds between each set so that you have adequate time to recover. And then we're gonna go into our next movement which is a strength movement or an overload that's gonna teach the nervous system how to keep this working in coordination with that quad. We're gonna need to stand up and get to a wall for that. Let's get going. We're gonna be completing a single leg squat. For some of you, this may be too much. We wanna go and reduce it. So you could do the same thing again on both sides of the body and just practice a squat. We're against the wall here because we're using this as basically a marker. He's gonna try to sit down into a squat position and put his butt up against the wall as a brace. He's gonna hold the pressure there at the bottom of the squat and then come back up. You can do this from a chair too. It doesn't matter how you would approach it, but we're using the wall for convenience. So the main thing here is remembering that this patella is attached to your quads, and if the quads are too taut, then that's gonna pull up on that patella and then pull into the attachment point, straining that tendon and the attachment point. Now just because they're tight doesn't mean we don't wanna work them, so we do wanna get them stronger. We wanna actually get this connection point stronger, but only after we've increased its mobility like we did with that soft tissue release technique we did in the beginning. So there's another component that we want to be aware of. When we have flat feet, or what's called pronation, your ankle rolls in. So if you notice this little bone here, it's called your medial malleolus, that's the edge of your tibia. It rolls inward, and you can see how that would twist the bone and then pull into that attachment point, making it even more aggravated. So we're gonna to want to avoid that as we go through this position. So he's gonna do that, and the reason why he has his shoes off today, by maintaining a doming of his foot. That means he's gonna pull his big toe back towards his heel, and that's gonna to help to support the arch of his foot and not allow his foot to rotate in, okay? 
Good job, Brian. So what he's gonna do is balance on one leg, pull up his opposite left leg, and he's gonna equally flex through his knee and hip and sit his butt backwards towards the wall, slowly controlling the knee placement so that it stays in line with the second toe. He gets to a bottom end position where his butt is against the wall. He's gonna hold it for two seconds and then come back up and then reset. So once again, we're teaching the mechanics of the knee to slowly control the deceleration of that knee flexion through the quad muscles, the rectus and the lateralis in their new lengthened position to teach the nervous system how to complete this movement all the time so that you don't have to think about it when you're doing all your sporting activities, okay? So let's do it again. Keep in mind again, if this invokes pain at all, you would not want to do it or you would want to reduce the range of motion until there was no pain. Okay, so let's give him a couple more examples. He's gonna again, bring the knee only to the tip of the toe, sit his hips back, keep the knee tracking right over the toe, and then come up. Okay, one more time. You'll notice that sometimes there's an asymmetry in the hip line. You're gonna to wanna to try your best not to let the hips swing out. That's again, another indication of a compensation pattern back there with the hamstrings. We wanna make sure that we reduce that by trying to keep everything parallel to the floor or parallel to the wall in front of you. Don't let there be an outswing or a drop. That's gonna distort again at the knee and create more of an aggravation. And that's what we're trying to clean up, right? So let's try not to do that. Or if you see that present in your own frame, reduce again the range of motion. You can't make your body less weight, weighted, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's that. So again, we're gonna do two sets of 20. You're gonna give yourself again 60 seconds in between. You notice how slow he went down. He did it to a count of four. He sat at the bottom, held the position for two, and then came up for one. Okay, so make sure to get out on your body on both sides, and then we're gonna finish off with our last movement, the strength movement, get the glute stronger. Let's get going. So we're gonna finish off with a hip extension movement in a sideline position. Ryan's already on the table, and you guys can jump down on the ground if you want to, throw a mat down. But basically what we wanna do is isolate the gluteal complex we talked about that beforehand and how that's gonna pose the quad. Well, we wanna overload it now that we've integrated it with that last movement we just completed. And we're gonna do that in isolation by doing a sideline hip extension. You gotta make sure again that your body's in an anatomically neutral position. So Ryan's gonna lay down. He's gonna support his head so that his cervical spine is in line with his rib cage. So his nose should be right over his sternum. He's gonna tuck his chin and pull his hand back so that his head is back over his ribs. So he's gonna let me work him. There you go. Keep the, row, the shoulders stacked over each other. So the spine should be in a neutral alignment as it would be if you were standing upright. Okay, so that allows him to isolate the glute without relying on other muscles that he doesn't wanna go and get involved. So the first thing is he's gonna pull his hips up into a 90. He's gonna extend the top leg and this is gonna be on the left side today but you would do again both sides. And you're gonna make sure that both the right and left hip bones are stacked on each other. You can notice that Ryan's got some tension in his opposite leg, his TFL, so his hip swings out. So he's gonna roll that over to keep it stacked. And you can see now what happened to his leg because of the tension of his quads. We didn't get the left side on this video. So Ryan, what are you gonna do after the video? Okay, so the bottom line is if I drill a hole straight down his pelvis, they would be stacked on each other perfectly, okay? That is very important in the engagement of this glute so that we don't overuse other muscles that we don't want to target. So with that in mind, he's going to breathe out and kick the leg back. And you, he's going to kick the leg back until he starts to see that outswing of the hip. So you notice that that pelvis started to roll open. He sunk his canoe with his cannon. He can't stabilize the force of his leg by maintaining his pelvis in the center of mass of his pelvis. That goes on as it's definitely gonna lead to compensations down at the knee. So he's gonna try his darndest to keep that hip over the other one, okay, right? And you guys too, this is a very specific exercise protocol. We see this all the time with people who just kind of swing back and they're willy-nilly about it. That actually is gonna make it worse. So do not do that. He's gonna keep his toe internally rotated. He's gonna breathe out and only kick back till he feels the stretch in those muscles that we were talking about, the lateralis and the rectus femoris, opposing with the glute or until that hip wants to open up because his core isn't strong enough. So he's gonna pull that hip in, keep the leg straight, kick back, breathe out, flex the abdominals by breathing out and only going 
to the point of his hip wanting to move. You'll notice that his kneecap's in line with his hip. He's not going any higher or lower. And again, he's maintaining the nice and centered position of his pelvis, okay? So you would do that again for two sets of 20. If you're doing it right, you should feel it right in the booty, right on that side. We're trying to avoid the pressure up in the front. Normally that again has to do with tight lateral muscle groups on the front of the quad. We wanna to want to reduce those with the roller or the ball like we targeted in the beginning. And we wanna to start to see this start to develop and get stronger with no play in the pelvis, maintaining a nice solid core. It's gonna to help to maintain the stability of the leg as we do our sporting activities. Okay, if you guys wanna get aggressive with it, we can add an additional knee band. You would wrap your knees and do the same movement. It's quite a bit harder. And again, the goal here is to maintain the precision and the alignment of the centered pelvis. If you add this and it starts to get wonky, stop doing it, go back to unloaded. If you do it for two sets of 20, with again, a nice slow extension, you're definitely gonna feel this within about two minutes or 20 repetitions. Once again, give yourself two or 60 seconds between the sets and then move into the other side. And that would bring us to the end of this video. Hope you guys got a lot out of this. Remember, ostrich slaughters is a painful condition. It's pretty irritating if you're right in the middle of your sport and all of a sudden you have to get out of the game because it's, again, breaking down. So this is a nice way of helping you to restore the function of that area. It does take some time and it will con continue to present as pain as long as you're still growing. So know that this is something that you may have to work on for a while. Our suggestion would be if there is acute pain greater than a four or three or four out of a 10 for more than a week, you probably should go see a physician. If it again is greater than seven out of a 10 for more than a day or two, again, go see a physician. And again, if this is something that you can do on your own without those indicators, have at it, do it a couple times a week. And either way, you'll notice a noticeable increase in the stability of your hips, your core, and hopefully your performance should go up. On behalf of, again, myself and Ryan and the team here at Fluid Health and Fitness, again, thank you for joining us. Our design to move, or our body is designed to move, so stay in motion, and we will see you next time for another episode.